The NTFS file system includes a large number of features, one of which is called file system journaling. This technology allows the operating system to maintain a transactional record of all changes made to a volume, such that in the event of a crash or power failure, the system can roll back the changes or continue where it left off. The goal is to maintain file system integrity and hopefully prevent catastrophic events from occurring. Okay, so that said, why do we care? Well, from a forensics perspective, there's a large amount of information that can be gleaned from this data, including one of the only ways we can prove if and when something was deleted from an NTFS volume. I'm going to assume you're already familiar with the concept of file system journaling. This is obviously nothing new and all modern file systems implement similar features. However, you may not be aware that NTFS actually maintains two different journals, one of which is called the Update Sequence Number Journal, also referred to as the USN Journal, or simply the Change Journal. The other is called Log File. The USN Journal is stored within the root of the volume in the $Extend directory within the $USNJRNL file. That file contains alternate data streams. In other words, it contains additional data attributes, one of which is called $max and the other is called $j. $j contains the meat of the data, specifically tracking the changes to each file and directory along with the reason for the change. The MFT's standard information attribute, which we've covered in previous episodes, contains a record of each file's update sequence number value, which is referenced within the $J file where the specific change is tracked. The USN journal is often utilized by backup utilities and anti-malware software, such that incremental backups or scans can be performed without the need to touch every file on disk. This obviously provides increased performance and a better user experience. So now let's talk about the log file. The log file is also stored within the root of the volume in a file aptly named $log file. So it's not within the $extend directory as the $USNJRNL file was. The biggest difference here is that this change journal tracks changes to MFT metadata, such as timestamps, as opposed to the previously mentioned USN journal which tracks the changes to the actual files and directories on disk. So when you think of $log file, think of MFT metadata. Luckily, we have numerous tools available to help us parse these artifacts. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at Triforce ANJP, which stands for Advanced NTFS Journal Parser. This tool can parse the USN journal, the log file, and the MFT, hence the Triforce name. It's available in a free version, luckily, as well as a paid commercial version that adds additional functionality. So let's take a look at this software and explore the wealth of data that it can provide to the forensic investigator. Let's go ahead and grab some sample data from this Windows 10 virtual machine. We'll use FTK Imager as we have in previous episodes, and we'll navigate to the root of the current OS volume. And what we're going to do is export $USNGRNL, $Log file, and $MFT. So first we'll go to $Extend, and now we see $USNGRNL. You'll notice it says zero bytes, but if we double click on it, we'll actually see those two alternate data streams. And as we discussed in the last section, we're going to want $J. We'll right click on this and then we'll choose export files and we'll save it to the desktop. This will take about a minute to export so we'll go ahead and speed through this. And the file was exported successfully. Next, let's look in the root and find $log file. We'll right click and once again we're going to be choosing export files. 
we'll again save it to the desktop. And that's done. And then lastly, let's grab $MFT right below it. So once again, right click, export files, choose the desktop, and click OK. And now we've got our MFT. So now the problem is, we actually have two attributes that are set on this. And as you can see on the desktop, there's nothing there. Nothing is showing up, and that's because we need to remove those attributes. So if we run a trib, you'll notice the system and hidden attributes on those three files. So let's go ahead and use a trib and take off those two attributes on each of the three files. So first $J, then $log file, and lastly $MFT. And now if we look at the desktop, we'll actually see those three files appearing. And now we can move on to using our ANJP tool. Now we are in ANJP, so let's go ahead and click on case name and we'll just call this demo. And for the case path, let's just use the desktop. And now we will need to specify the location of those three files that we just exported using FTK Imager. There's $MFT, now $Log file, and then lastly, USN will be represented with the $J. If we look at our options, we're going to leave everything at the default, which you can see the time zone, cluster size, MFT entry size, etc. So we won't change any of this. Same with event selection. Everything's checked by default. We will not uncheck any of this. So we're ready to go at this point. Let's go ahead and click parse. And this is going to take several minutes to run. So we'll go ahead and come back when it's finished, and then we can start analyzing the results. So let's take a look at that in the next section. The tool is now successfully completed and we're looking at the log output on screen. You'll also notice a save log button on the bottom left and if we click that, we can save this data to a text file if we want. I'll cancel that for now. And we're ready to review the results. To do that, we'll simply click on the reports tab in the top left. You'll notice the database of demo.db is already populated, though we could browse to one. At this point though, all we need to do is click connect, and we are now connected to our demo.db. Let's go ahead and expand the left tree. As we go down and expand everything underneath reports, you will notice all of the data available to us based on the parsing of those three different artifacts, MFT, log file, and USN. Our first stop is MFT, specifically our MFT file listing. So the MFT file listing is going to be a full parse of the master file table and all of the data it contains, all of the files that are present on disk should be reflected here. And as we scroll down through this data, you will notice we're barely scratching the surface of what is in the actual MFT. And the bottom right, you'll actually notice the total rows of 701,625. As we scroll to the right, you'll notice our standard information MACB timestamps, our FN or file name MACB timestamps, and other pieces of information pulled from the master file table. There are plenty of tools that can parse this by itself, but keep in mind that ANJP is not only showing us MFT, but also log file and USN. If we scroll to the bottom of this output, we're actually going to see 5,000 rows displayed by default. But in the top right, we can click the right arrow and it will load the next 5,000 of that total 701,625. And again, scrolling down, there's the next 5,000. So fairly intuitive to use the tool. Our next stop is going to be our log file, which recall that log file will track changes to MFT metadata, whereas USN or USN journal is going to track the changes to the actual files and folders on disk. So let's look at transaction events and creations. And of course, across the top here, you'll see all of the column headers available to us. Of particular importance is the log file RCD name, which is the name of the actual file that is the subject of this transaction event. And of course, any of this can be filtered. We'll get into filtering when we look at USN.
but we can filter on any of these columns and get very granular with our searching terms. The bottom right tells us that there are 4,400 rows, which is why the left and right arrows at the top are grayed out. Everything is able to fit on one page at this point, 4,400 rows. We also have deletions and renames and moves. Let's go ahead and check out USN transaction events and we'll start with creations. Now off camera, I created a file earlier called secret.txt and a few hours later, I came back and deleted that file. So we would have something to use for a filter. So let's go ahead and move this filter dialog on screen. And you see the USN RCD file name column. So let's go ahead and choose that column from the dropdown because that contains the file name that we're going to want to filter. We'll choose like, and then we'll simply type in secret.txt for the value, and then click add to add that condition. Then we'll click filter. And here you see the transaction events that are related to the creation of secret.txt. Recall that our MACB timestamps track modification, access, MFT record changed, and birth or creation. So it's just another example of where we can find proof that a file was created. However, remember that the MACB timestamps do not track a deletion time, yet we can find out when something was deleted by parsing the deletion transaction events in the USN journal. The column is slightly differently named, so we'll choose USN RCD file name, and again like, and then secret.txt. This is going to be our second condition here. So let's go ahead and do that, and then filter on this. And now we are seeing transaction events related to deletions for secret.txt. And it's quite astonishing to most people that you can find this timestamp, which will actually show us when that file was deleted from the disk, which is just amazing. Also keep in mind that with any of these journals, we can use volume shadow copies, which we've covered in previous episodes and go back in time to grab an older transaction journal, be it log file or USN journal, because what we're looking for may not necessarily be in this current journal, but it may be in an older journal we can pull from a volume shadow copy. So keep that in mind. Here, of course, we're looking at renames and moves, pretty self-explanatory. Had I renamed secret.txt, we would have been able to see that here as well. Under other reports, under log to timeline, as you might imagine, this contains all of our data in a log to timeline friendly format. So if we wanted to export this data for use in the creation of a super timeline with log to timeline, this will output that pipe delimited format that is expected by that tool. You'll notice across the top, all of the L2T column headers. And as we continue to scroll to the right, a large amount of data in that particular format. And then our last stop on the left is events summary, where you can find a summary of events. And here we see all of the event summary types for log file and USN. So that's pretty much it for this tool. Again, this is just a high level, quick look at the tool. I hope that you see the value of parsing these three artifacts, especially together like this. Quite a bit of useful information. I hope this has been informative and useful to you. And as always, thank you for watching. I will see you in the next episode. Take care.